Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to Tomorrow. My name is Space Mike and today we're going to talk about some of the updates and progress that Xcore Aerospace has made on their Lynx space plane. For this, your space pod for June 23rd, 2015. The Lynx space plane has been in development for many years, and unlike their competitor, Virgin Galactic, who developed the airframe and did aerodynamic and flight testing of the space plane itself before actually making sure that the engines were up to spec, Xcore Aerospace has taken the opposite approach, and their engine testing is largely complete. They've tested several different types of engines over the years, different types of fuels, but the engines that have been finalized for the Lynx space plane use liquid oxygen and kerosene fuels, and the engine is designated the 5K18 engine, although there are still more tests to go. But Xcore Aerospace has begun constructing the actual prototype for the Lynx Mark I. They received their constructed cockpit, which was a composite built by Atomworks, and they have mounted it to the fuselage that will be used for the prototype. They also mounted the engines to that fuselage to make sure that all of the measurements and specs were correct and that everything lined up. They then removed the engines because further testing is still going to happen. Xcore Aerospace then installed the strakes onto the fuselage of the prototype, and have even started work on the chines for the front of the vehicle. But actually, Xcore contracted with another company, Matrix Composites, to actually build the chine panels that will be connecting the strakes to the front of the nose so that the entire vehicle is completely aerodynamic. Back in April, Jeff Grayson gave some updates at the Space Access Conference in Phoenix, Arizona as to what the progress would be for the manufacturing for the rest of the year. He said that the wings would be the final piece that would be installed onto the vehicle and the control surfaces and said that that would be the hardest part to do. He also said that they would begin flight tests of the vehicle this year of 2015. And it's unknown whether or not there's going to be some drop tests or glide tests to make sure that they have enough control to and glide ability to be able to land at a runway and to make sure that the landing legs would deploy and all that sort of things but they might just go ahead with hot fire tests right out of the gate and actually use the rocket propulsion to fly around and make sure that the vehicle is working the way that it's supposed to. The Mark I vehicle will not fly any paying passengers and Xcore Aerospace has sold about 300 tickets already and has been involved in a couple of really cool competitions and at least the Axe Apollo competition, 23 winners are going to fly on the Xcore Lynx space plane at some point. However, that will be the Mark II vehicle. The Mark I will solely be a prototype and will be flight tested many, many times before they actually begin flying paying customers. There are also two updates on the business side of Xcore Aerospace. First of all, Jeff Grayson has actually stepped down as CEO and is now the Chief Technology Officer so that he can focus on the actual progress and construction of the Lynx space plane, and has hired John J. Gibson to replace him as CEO. John Gibson has experience with Beechcraft and also served as the Assistant Secretary to the United States Air Force. And also, Xcore Aerospace has received a potentially large investment from a Chinese venture capital firm, Haiyan Capital, and it's unclear how much money has actually been given to Xcore Aerospace, or rather invested into Xcore, and neither party has commented on how much money is actually involved in that. Although with the kind of frugal approach that Xcore Aerospace has had over the years to making the progress that they have made, they just might have enough to get that final push of getting the Lynx Mark I flying, operational, and getting ready for the Lynx Mark II. With the Lynx Mark II, they're actually going to be doing a lot of construction in Cape Canaveral in Florida, and it's unclear whether or not they're actually going to be launching any flights from there. As of right now, they have a deal to be launching tourist flights from Curacao, and there are still lots of things in the air. They're going to be moving their facilities from Mojave to Midland, Texas, and there are lots of things that are in the works for Xcore Aerospace. Anyway, that's all I have for updates on Xcore Aerospace today, and I would love to know what you think about their progress and whether or not you think between Xcore and Virgin Galactic, who will be the first one to send paying passengers into suborbital space. 
Thank you very much for watching this video. My name is Michael Clark, and hopefully you know a little bit more today than you did yesterday, thanks to tomorrow. Keep moving onwards and upwards, everybody, and I will see you in the future.